Letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Oh, almighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. What tomorrow brings you? There's not the day ahead. You have not seen no one. So in our things be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. Now 
that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Unwavering Faith Christian Church Confession of Faith We are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, an heir of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are the body of Christ, fitly joined together for a common cause, and that is to advance the kingdom of God. We are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. We are healed healthy, whole, and complete in all the will of God. We are 100% tithe givers. We bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Therefore, our barns are overflowing. We have more than enough to meet all of our needs and to be a blessing to others. We pursue Jesus with a pure heart and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things are added unto us. We walk by faith and not by sight, and we have an unwavering faith in the Father's love. We are persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We are the apple of His eye, and we walk in His divine favor. His goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in His house forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening. To God be the glory. Uh, welcome to this week's study of uh, the Word of God. We are so grateful to have you with us on tonight. Pray that you have had a wonderful day in the Lord. I pray that uh, you have lived a life of peace uh, in Him today. Amen. And understanding that we uh, can do that in Him. Uh, we have been authorized, amen, to be at peace and to live uh, a life of peace in Christ Jesus. Uh, let us get into the word tonight. We're so grateful to have each and every one of you here with us. Amen. Good evening, Brother McKinney. Uh, good to have you with us uh, on tonight, sir. God bless you. We're continuously praying uh, as you're out there on that road. Amen. We're continuously praying uh, the angels of God be camped round about you uh, for divine protection. Amen and that he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways, lest you'll dash your foot against the stone, sir. Father, we thank and we praise you, God, for who you are. We thank you, God, and we trust you. Uh, we understand that it's in you that we live and we move and we have our very being. We thank you, God, for your peace that passes all of our understanding as it guards our hearts and our minds. We thank you for every promise knowing that every one of your promises in Christ is yea and amen. We thank you, God, for your protection, your provision, your purpose, God, that you have for each one of us. We thank you for your prosperity. That is, in you, we do better in every area of our lives. And so, God, as we open your word tonight, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be the teacher. Speak through my mouth as I open my mouth to declare the very words of God. And I pray, God, that through the speaking and teaching of the gospel, that hearts would be changed, that people would be encouraged, uh, strengthened, that your body would be edified in the precious name of Jesus. And we come against anything, any hindrance, any distractions, God, that would try to keep your people from hearing this word and receiving all that you have for them on tonight. And I tribute 
is to God be the glory for all of the marvelous things that you have and continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen to God be the glory uh, on tonight. Uh, so Sunday, uh, we, we spoke from the topic perfect peace. And uh, this is exactly where the Holy Spirit has kept me for uh, the study on tonight. And so we're going to be teaching on tonight from perfect peace uh, part two. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to do a, a brief recap of what we covered on Sunday uh, as it pertains to perfect peace. Sunday, we came out of the book of John, uh, chapter number 14 and verses 26 through 27. And I'm just going to cover that uh, briefly from the uh, the amplified version uh, of the Bible. Uh, so if you uh, have your Bibles, uh, go ahead and turn with me. Share this broadcast while uh, while we're pulling up the scripture. Uh, uh, share the broadcast, amen, with uh, friends and, and relatives uh, so uh, we can get the gospel out to uh, as many as, as possible. So John chapter number 14 and verse 26. Uh, but the helper, this is uh, Jesus, is, is uh, talking here to uh, to his his followers. But the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. And he will he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Uh, peace, verse twenty seven. Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance, and give you courage and strength for every challenge. So Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's gonna be our helper, which the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit is our helper. And then Jesus go, go, goes on and he emphasizes his perfect peace. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. His perfect peace, every circumstance, and give us courage and strength in every challenge. And so that lets us know, first and foremost, uh, that perfect peace comes only through Jesus Christ. And not only does perfect peace come only through Jesus Christ, but his perfect peace shall be with us always because the Holy Spirit is with us always. Uh, the issue is, do we understand perfect peace and do we accept the perfect peace uh, that Jesus came uh, to give us and that he, he has sent for us? <clears throat> we also covered that in the Greek, that word peace is uh, irene and it's spelled E-I-R-E-N-E. And for the believer, uh, this is what that word means. For the believer, this is what that word means. It's the tranquil state of a soul assured of their salvation through Christ, fearing nothing from God and content with their earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. And then I shared with the body of Christ that that does not mean that we just settle and 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 we, we're we're uh, complacent. So content or contentment is not complacency. Uh, what it is, it's we're depending and we're trusting on God for where we are in our lives at that very moment. And so Paul said, you know, he's learned how to be a base. He's learned how to be a bound. And so in that, we learn that where God has us at this particular place in our lives, that we are content there, meaning that we are content in him and we're content with him. 
Uh, we don't stop dreaming. Uh, we don't stop pursuing. We don't stop living. Uh, that's not what it means. It simply means that we, uh, again, we are happy with who we are and where we are in Christ. And then that does not depend on outside circumstances. That's the world's happiness. And so Jesus said that I don't give you peace as the world gives you peace. Uh, because as far as the world is concerned, our peace is dependent upon how much money we have. Our peace is dependent upon who we marry. Our peace is dependent upon what kind of job title we have. Our peace is dependent upon the reputation that we have. Our peace is dependent upon our social uh, social status. Uh, that's, that's what the world considers uh, to bring us peace. But Jesus said, no, that's not the peace that I give. But instead, I give my perfect peace, that peace that is adequate for every situation and for every circumstance in your life. So in the chaotic times, in the frustrating times, uh, in the confused times, in, uh, in the disappointing times, we can still be at peace because we have Christ. And he is, Isaiah uh, said that he is the Prince of Peace. And so if we have the Prince of Peace, then we should, as believers, have perfect peace. Okay? Now, a lot of times that's hard to comprehend. It's hard to understand uh, that we can have that because we live in this world and so much of what we depend on is, is that which is tangible. Uh, I, I share with them, you know, a warm embrace. It's tangible. Uh, a shoulder to lean on and to cry on. It's tangible. Money in the bank account. It's tangible. Uh, all of these things, uh, we get confused with, uh, with peace. And so we, we, we don't want to get comfort or comfortable confused with peace because so many think that if I, if I can just get comfortable, you know, I, I'll be at peace. No, that's, that's, that's not the case uh, because comfort doesn't necessarily bring peace, but peace will always bring comfort. I'm going to say that again. Comfort does not necessarily bring peace, but peace will always bring comfort. Uh, and so content, we're talking about content. We mentioned content. And so content means uh, to be in a state of peaceful happiness. And our level of happiness, uh, I'm sorry, our level of peace is a direct correlation uh, of our relationship or with, to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, so what's, where, what's your level of peace? And uh, if you can tell me your level of peace, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to tell you uh, where your relationship is with Christ. Because Jesus lets us know, he let the, the disciples know, he let his followers know, uh, in this world, we'll have tribulation. Uh, in this world, we'll have trouble. In this world, we'll have trials. He even went on to say that it is impossible for us to be in this world and not be offended. Uh, but he urges us to get over the offense. In all of that, we can be at peace because we want to. We won't be so easily offended, or we won't allow one to offend us, because we are operating in the peace of God. And the Bible goes on to tell us, and we covered that uh, on Sunday as well, uh, that He will uh, give us peace that passes all of our understanding, and that peace will guard our hearts, and it will guard our it will guard our minds. Then Isaiah twenty six and three, it tells us this. Uh, for those whose minds are stayed on him, he'll keep us in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. Then Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, we covered that. But before we got to Jeremiah 29 and 11, we started at uh, the first uh passage of Jeremiah, I think we started maybe around uh, chapter seven, we may have, I mean, verse seven, we may have even started at verse number one, but let me just give you a brief uh, backdrop of Jeremiah 29. So Jeremiah 29 is a letter that was written to the children of Israel while they were in Babylonian exile. And so Jeremiah penned this letter and this letter was the, the inspiration of this letter, just like uh, uh, the word of God is divine inspiration, the Holy Spirit. So Jeremiah was given this to pen to the people of God while they were in exile. 
And while they were there, he told them this. This is what the letter contained in Jeremiah. You want to go there? It's Jeremiah chapter number 29. And God said to the people, build houses in that land and live in them. Be fruitful, multiply, have sons, have daughters in that land. Uh, uh, give your sons, find wives for your sons that they may marry and that they may be fruitful and that they may multiply. Uh, allow your daughters to marry that they may be fruitful and that they may multiply. And then he said, do not decrease in numbers. This, this is what was in the letter to Jeremiah Penn. Do not decrease in numbers. And then he went on to tell them uh, that those that, that, have, that uh, have captured you, in other words, the inhabitants of Babylon, pray for them. And this is what he told them to pray. Pray for their peace. And now I know that sounds strange. I know that sounds weird. He says, pray for their peace. Because when you pray for their peace, you're also making way for your peace. While you're in exile, he went on to tell them that you will be in exile for 70 years. 70 years. You're going to be there for 70 years. So he's telling them to, to, to be content with where they are, live there, thrive there. He's going to prosper them there, but they're going to still be in exile. But he's going to prosper them while they're in exile. And then he gets to 29 and 11, the passage of scripture that we love to quote, but I need us to understand what this passage of scripture really means. Remember, uh, we have to rightly divide the word of truth in order for us to live the right way and also in order for us to gain the right understanding of the word of God so we can adequately apply it uh, to our lives to, to, to receive the proper benefit, the intended benefit of the word of God in our lives. So he goes on 29 and 11, and he says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. They're plans, some, some uh, additions read, they're plans to prosper you. Uh, the Amplified say, uh, plans to bring you peace and well-being. While I have you there exiled in that land, peace and well-being. Peace and well-being. Being and I need somebody to write that down. I need you to, to 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 make note of that peace and well-being. That's the plan that God had for the Israelites while they were in Babylonian exile. Now you can't tell me that the God that we serve today is not the same God that provided for His children while they were in exile. You you can't you can't convince me that God will not do the same for us in this chaotic society in which we live in right now. God's desire is that we have peace and well-being in every area of our lives. And so so, so let me just uh, turn with you uh, to Jeremiah real quick. So Jeremiah chapter, uh, Jeremiah 29 and, and 11 uh, out of the Amplified. If we have that, can you go ahead and, and, and put that up there on the screen? Uh, for us, we have uh, just we have a little time. Uh, I want uh, the people to be able to see that, and I'm I'm pulling it up here in the uh, in the amplifier. It doesn't matter even if I re even after I read it in the amplifier. You once you pull it up, uh, uh, there go ahead and put it on the on the screen for us, please, sir. Um. Let me just start at verse number for verse number ten. Um, well, actually, let me let me go back to verse number eight. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your false prophets who are among you and your debonairs deceive you. Pay no attention and attach no significance to, to the dreams which they dream are to yours. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. So those that's coming now, he's he's and this is what he follows it up with. He say, I haven't sent them. Uh, and so when if they come to you and they tell you something contrary to this, don't listen to them because they're not speaking on behalf of me. I have not sent them. This is what he says is going to happen. This is the Lord in the letter 
that he gave to Jeremiah to pen to the people of God. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years of exile have been completed for Babylon, I will visit, inspect you, and keep my good promise to you to bring you back to this place. After 70 years, I'm coming and I'm going to bring you back. After 70 years. If someone comes to you and say that they had a dream, or they come to you and say that you're going to be leaving prior to 70 years, do not listen to them because I am not the one that has sent them. This is what I'm telling you is going to happen. After 70 years, I'm going to come and revisit you and return you back to your land. But nothing's going to happen before that. That's why I told you to build houses, to get land. That's why I told you to plant your gardens, to be fruitful. That's why I told you to marry your children uh, off so that they can be fruitful and they can start families. Do not decrease in number is what he told them uh, uh, in Jeremiah 29. Do not decrease in number numbers. Then he said, seek peace and well-being. That's in verse number seven. He said, seek peace and well-being for the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. Pray to the Lord on behalf of the city that I have you exiled in. For in its peace, well-being, you will have peace. Pray for the city in which you are in because in its peace, you will have peace. God will plant you and he'll prosper you where he has planted you. I'm gonna say that again. God will prosper you where he has planted you. So pray for the city in which you are in, pray for its peace. And as a result, you yourself will have peace. God is able to bring an oasis in the middle of a desert. God is able to bring crop out of the dry places. God is able to bring fresh produce out of the barren land. Only God can do that. And God can and will do that supernaturally when you understand that in all situations and all circumstances that you have access to his perfect peace. And his plans for you, his plans for me, is that we will be at peace, perfect peace and well being. That well-being is the same uh, uh, concept as prosperity, meaning to do better in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. That's his desire for us. Perfect peace in a chaotic world, in a chaotic situation, in a frustrating situation, in, a, in, in an evil world, in a manipulative world, his plan, his desire for us is that we are in perfect peace and well-being. And then we 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 finished it out. I think we finished it out uh, Sunday in the book of Philippians. Yes, that's that's where we finished it out on Sunday in the book of Philippians. Uh, and let's just go there real quick, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, where we are for uh, tonight's uh, lesson. So Philippians, and it's going to be in chapter number four uh, of the book of Philippians. God bless you, Kim, Kimberly Franklin. God, God bless you, Kimberly Franklin. Franklin. God bless you, Kim Ellington, uh, my friends from back home. God bless you, Barbara Jean. And Miss Darlene, God bless you, Sister Fuller. So good to have you on with us on tonight, amen. All the way from Alabama, God bless you. Uh, so Philippians chapter number four, uh, and we read verse eight, verses one through eight uh, on Sunday, but tonight I think uh, I'm just going to hit uh, verse number, verses number six and seven, let's do verse number four. Uh, and then we'll do six and seven. So verse number four say, rejoice in the Lord always, delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I will say rejoice. Um, let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. 
Verse number six say, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. And here we are, verse number seven, and the peace of God, that peace that reassures the heart, that peace that transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ, in Christ Jesus is yours. God bless you, Pastor Jackson. Uh, that peace is yours. The, the peace of God is yours. So often, again, we have all of these, uh, we have all of these gifts and we have uh, all of these uh, blessings that have been bestowed on us and we fail to tap into them as believers because our focus is elsewhere. And so Jesus had it pinned in his word in Colossians that we are to uh, set our affections on those things which are above that we will not fulfill uh, the lust and the desires of the things of this world. And so that's not Colossians as far as the lust and the desires, Colossians is set our affections on those things which are above and not the things that are beneath. But the reason that we are to do that is so that we will not uh, fulfill the lust and the desires of this flesh and that we will not fall prey to the cares and the concerns of this world to the point where it would take our focus off of the kingdom business. So we ought to have a kingdom mindset and part of our kingdom mindset is understanding that we have the peace of God that we normally don't operate in because we're so concerned about the things of this world and we're and we're allowing the cares of this world to dictate how we live. And so so often we don't live in peace because there's no peace in this world. We don't live in peace because there's no peace uh, in the surroundings. Uh, that we find ourselves in. And so we'll find ourselves joining right in the rat race uh, with the world, but we want peace. Everybody wants peace. Even those that are not saved, they want peace. The world is crying out every day for peace. We, we're praying for peace over here. We're praying for peace over there. We're, we're hoping for peace over here and hoping for peace over there. But that peace that we're seeking, that peace that, that the world is seeking, it cannot be obtained through methods created by the world. It, it cannot be obtained in that facet. This peace can only be obtained through a relationship with Christ Jesus. His, his, perfect, his perfect peace can only be obtained through a relationship with him. Okay, so so let us go now uh to the book of John chapter number 16. And let's start our reading there. Uh and if you could sir go ahead and and just put that uh up there and we'll begin our reading and then there's going to be some portions of this where uh I will amplify it uh through the reading of the amplified uh the amplified Bible. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I am come unto the world again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. 
Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should, should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest from thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me, somebody say in me, in him, in Christ, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus said a lot there. And so let me let's 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 break it down. So what Jesus is saying, he's telling the disciples, uh, I'm getting ready to go. You know that I'm going to the Father. Uh, I'm going to come back. But bottom line, I'm going to be with my Father. And no longer will I pray to the Father on your behalf. Now that sounds like it sounds harsh, but listen to me. Let's 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 finish this out. No longer will I pray to the Father on your behalf. And I'm not going to even tell you now that I'm going to pray to the Father on your behalf. This is why. Because you believe in me, your relationship with the Father is going to be to the point to where you can ask him directly. You will ask it in my name. But you will ask him directly and he'll do it for you. Because of the relationship that you have for me. Because you love me. Because you love me, Jesus, because you love me as the son of God, now you can go to the father yourself and he'll do it for you. I won't have to intercede on your behalf. Oh my God, come on, that's revelation. That's revelation. We're talking about a divine relationship with the father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's what Jesus is telling them here that you're going to be able to go yourself. No longer will you have to be relying on me to go to my father for you. You're going to be able to do it. Uh, you're going to be able to do it yourself. And I want to, I want to uh, go there from the Amplified real quick. Uh, John chapter number 16. Uh, real quick, because I, 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 I saw this and I was like, my God, this is, this is so good. And we, as the body of Christ, we can be so encouraged uh, by this word. We can be so encouraged by the words of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who uh, uh, had only good for us, only good for us. And so uh, so I want to read this from the Amplified, and I'm going to pick up the reading in verse number 28. I came from the Father and have come unto have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, ah, now you are speaking plainly to us and not in figures of speech. We now know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. Because of this, we believe without any doubt that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you now at least believe? Take careful notice. An hour is coming and has arrived when you will all be scattered, each of his own, each to his own home, leaving me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. And now he says this I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. He's letting them know they're going to suffer some things. He's letting them know they're going to go through some things. In this world, you will have tribulation. This is what he follows it up with in verse 33 here. In this world, you will have tribulation. But, but, but I need you to be of good courage. I need you to be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And even though in this world, you will have tribulation, man, look what I'm doing. I'm giving you my perfect peace. And, and how did you obtain that perfect peace? You obtained that perfect peace because you believe me. You believe that I am who I say that I am. Oh, my God, my God. Come on, let's pick this up. Let's pick this up 
saints of God, let's pick this up because we know who Jesus is. Because we believe that he is who he said he is, we should have perfect peace because the world, amen, we're going to have trials, we're going to have tribulation, where there's going to be temptation, but we still have Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. And because we do, we have perfect peace. Woo, glory to God. Ah, glory to God. Mm. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have trouble. I mean, you have tribulation and distress and suffering. Tribulation, distress, and suffering. He's not sugarcoating anything for us. Every, every message is not going to be, or every message should not be, a message of uh, you're going to have a windfall. Every message should not be a message uh, of, of everything is going to work out and is going to work out in the next five or 10 minutes. Every message should not be a message that there will, that you're not going to have any pain. You're not going to have any suffering that every rose is going to line up and, and you're going to tiptoe through the tulips. No, that's not this life in which we live. Jesus knew Jesus suffered persecution. Jesus suffered ridicule. Jesus had trials. Jesus was tempted just like we are tempted. Yet he did not yield to temptation because even though he was tempted, he still had the peace of the father upon him. And even though we may be tempted, even though we may have trials and tribulations, we still have the love of Christ and we have the Prince of Peace. And therefore we can operate and live and walk and move in God's perfect peace. He says, but be courageous, be confident, be undoubted, undaunted, I'm sorry, be undaunted, be filled with joy. And that word undaunted means uh, not intimidated or discouraged by difficulty, danger, or disappointment. Whew. My God. Can we, can we, as the, the household of faith, can we earnestly say that we will not be intimidated or discouraged by difficulty, by danger, or by disappointment? That's saying a lot, but we should be able to say that because Jesus tells us here to be of good, to be, be encouraged, to be, uh, to be courageous, to be confident, be undoubted. We're not going to be intimidated because we have to go through some things. We're not going to be intimidated because everything doesn't line up for us. We're not going to be intimidated because we have to wait patiently on some things. We're not going to be in uh, intimidated uh, because everything is not microwavable in, in our lives. We're going to allow patience to have her perfect work. And while we're allowing patience to have her perfect work, we're still experiencing, we're resting in the perfect peace of Christ Jesus, and we're experiencing our well-being. In other words, our minds are still sound. Our hearts are still receptive to hear from God. Our ears are still inclined to hear from the Holy Spirit. Our minds are, are sober as we're going through. Our, our minds are stayed on Jesus as we're going through. Again, Isaiah 26 and three, he will keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. So let me encourage you, beloved, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're facing right now, keep your mind stayed on him and watch the peace of God. And that peace will pass all of your understanding. In other words, you won't be able to adequately comprehend it. You won't be able to put it into words. You won't adequately be able to write it down and describe what it is. The only thing that you will know is it's just something that is just so overwhelming. And you know what you're facing, but yet and still, you're not losing your mind. Yet and still, you're not losing heart. You're not fainting, amen. But rather, you're mounting up on wings like an eagle. And you're running and you're not being you're not being tired and you're you're not being frustrated, disillusioned, and hard.
to get along with. You're staying in Christ. And you're keeping yourself in the center of his love and in the center of his will where he can reach and bless you. So we're not going to be intimidated. We're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to be discouraged by difficulty, danger, or disappointment. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter number 3 and verse 6. Uh, and believe it or not, we're almost, we're almost done. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3 and verse number 6. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. Somebody say always. By all means, the Lord be with you all. Now the Lord of peace himself. He's, he's a personal God. He's a personal God. He's a reachable God. He's not one that sits high and cannot see what we're going through or even feel our uh, in, uh, aff uh, aff infirmities or our afflictions. But as, as the older saints, the, the, the mature saints would say, he's a God that sits, sits high and looks low. He's a God that never sleeps, nor does he ever slumber. And so the scripture tells us that he, the God of peace, he is going to always be with us. And then he does, he makes a way for us always. His peace is always with us in all situations and in all circumstances. Uh, Colossians chapter number three and verse 15. Can we get that one, please, sir? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the peace of God rule in our hearts. In other words, let the when when we talk about rule, uh, it means taking authority over. Uh, in other words, you know, if we if we put it in, into the uh, slang vernacular, uh, calling the shots. So let peace, let peace call the shots in our hearts. When we let peace rule. Uh, then we'll, we'll we'll see that that happiness remains where it shouldn't remain, according to the world's uh, standard, or shall I say, according to the world's uh, way of looking at things. The happiness is there where it should not be there. Interpretation is the word I was looking for, according to the world's interpretation that happiness should not be there, yet it is there for you. Uh, that joy should not be there, yet it is there for you. Peace should not be there, yet it is there for you. And the world cannot comprehend it because that's not a thing that comes from the world. It's nothing that the world or its uh, agencies or or, or or anything of the world can can give. Put that scripture back up for me, because uh, I, I it, there was a, the, that last part. And be ye thankful. And be ye thankful. Do we take the peace of God for granted, or are we thankful that we have peace in the midst of trials? Are we thankful that we have peace in the midst? of tribulations? Are we thankful that we have peace in the midst of family crisis? Are we thankful that we have peace in the midst of uh, the job not going the way we, we want it to go? Are we thankful that we have peace in the midst of sickness? Do we have peace in the midst of disease? Are we thankful for the peace of God? We should be, beloved. We should be thankful for the peace of God. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. 
be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Now, I'm going to turn there because, I, I, I again, I want to read this to you out of the out of the Amplified. I'm going to expound on it just a little bit more uh, out of the Amplified. So 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And what we find here is Paul is urging the uh, Corinthian church to examine uh, themselves. Uh, before we get to verse 11, that's, that's where we are. He wants them to examine themselves. And so let us let us pick up the narrative in verse number one of uh, chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians. Let me get there. I'm over in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 13. So this is the third time that I am visiting you. Every fact shall be sustained and confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I have already warned those who have sinned in the past and all the rest as well. And I warn them now, and I warn them now, even though I'm absent from you, as I did when I was with you the second time, that if I come back, I will not spare anyone. Since you seek forensic proof that Christ is speaking in and through me, he is not weak or, in, or ineffective in dealing with you, but powerful within you. For even though he was crucified in weakness, yielding himself, yet he lives resurrected by the power of God, his father. For we too are weak in him, and he was, and he was as he was humanly weak. Yet we, we are alive and well in fellowship with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. Examine yourselves, not me. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as counterfeit. But I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test nor are we to be rejected. But I pray to God that you may do nothing wrong, not so that we and our teaching may appear to be approved, but that you may continue doing what is right, even though we, by comparison, may seem to have failed. Verse number eight, for we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth and the gospel, the good news of salvation. We are glad when we are weak, since God's power comes freely through us. But you, by comparison, are strong. We also pray for this, that you be complete. Look at this now. That you be complete, fully restored, growing and maturing in godly character and spirit, pleasing your heavenly Father by the life you live. For this reason, I am writing these things while absent from you, so that when I come, I will not need to deal with you severely. I will not to I will not need to deal severely with you in my use of the authority which the Lord has given me to be used for building you up and not tearing you down. So when the word comes, the word comes to build you up and not tear you down. That's why as ministers of the gospel, we have to make sure that we're preaching and teaching to you and not preaching and teaching at you. Because the word of God, even though the word of God sometime will come and it could be a word of rebuke, that word is still to build you up, to edify you and not to tear you down. Because the Bible lets us know that all, all scripture is profitable for rebuke, for rebuke, reproof, for edification, for building up, it's, it is profitable. And so Paul here is urging them to examine themselves because they are the household of faith. They are the children of God. And as the children of God, as the household of faith, we must examine ourselves. I'm, no, I'm, I'm still talking about perfect peace. We must examine ourselves 
and, and we must know that we are in faith, trusting God and believing God in all things. And now Paul goes on and to say this, no, verse number 11. Finally, believers, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be, <laughs> be, com be, confront be confronted. Be like-minded. Live comforted. I'm sorry. Uh, be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. Do you see that? That's the Amplified of verse number 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 13. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Somebody put that in there and say to yourself, live in peace. You, you, you. Make a vow to yourself that in 2024, you're going to live in peace and experience well-being. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. My prayer for you in this year of 2024 is that you walk closely with God. My prayer for you in this year of 2024 is that you live in peace. My prayer for you in this year of 2024 is that you experience well-being. My prayer for you is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, that you would do better in every area of your life. My prayer for you in this year of 2024 is that the God of love and the God of peace, the source of your loving kindness, will be with you every day of your life and you will experience the goodness of God and you will know beyond a doubt that it's God and it's God all by himself that's making all things possible for you. Even though you may be going through some things, the God of peace is with you and the God of peace is keeping you and the God of peace is growing you up in him. That's my desire for each one of you in this year of 2024. And beloved, I'm here to declare to you that God will prosper you where he has planted you. And I'm here to declare to you that in this year of 2024, if you harden not your hearts and if you do not draw back, but if you lean in, and you trust God with all of your heart, I, I'm here to declare to you that God will make the barren land fruitful for you in this year of 2024. You're going to see new growth. You're going to see new uh, 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 production. You're going to see a higher level of understanding. You're going to have visions. Amen. You're going to dream dreams. And God is going to manifest physical He's going to bring about physical manifestations in your life in this year of 2024. Do not draw back. Do not draw back, beloved. Do not draw back. Grab a hold of God's peace and keep his peace and allow that perfect peace to rule your hearts in this year of 2024. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let me close with these last two scriptures. Romans chapter number five and verse number one. Can we get that up there, sir? <clears throat> Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our peace comes through Christ by the hands of Christ. And because we have been justified by faith, we have the peace of God. Don't, you know, you often hear, don't let the enemy, don't let anybody steal your joy. I'm here to say this year, don't let anyone steal your peace. Don't let anyone steal your peace. The Bible says, if at all possible, be at peace with all men. 
Here's the revelation of that. They don't have to be at peace with you. You need to be at peace with them. In other words, you need to make sure and I need to make sure that we allow peace to rule and reign in our hearts, that we may be at peace with all men, whether they're at peace with us or not. Romans chapter number, uh, well, go, go back there, uh, Romans, and just, just hold that up there uh, for a little while, with, if you could. Romans chapter number five and verse number one. I pray that you're receiving something uh, tonight. I pray that this is good uh, to you tonight. And so this justification we're talking about here uh, in Romans chapter number five, and that's God's, God's gracious justification of the believer. And this is not by stages of uh, of degrees or, or anything like that. Uh, this is it's it's instantaneous when we receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. This justification is instantaneous. We don't have to work for that. You don't have to earn that. You can't earn that. You can't work uh, for that. You can well. You can. You can work for it. Uh, but that work is not that. That's going to only prove to be uh, futile because works cannot bring about this justification. This justification comes about uh, by what Christ has already done, meaning the finished redemptive work of the cross. And part of that justification, that whole package deal is our peace. Our peace is tied up, is wrapped up, and is tangled up in that justification that we receive uh, when, we, when, we, when Jesus died on the cross and then when we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. In other words, when we accept and grab hold of and take possession of the gift uh, of our salvation, that peace comes uh, within the gift of our salvation. The believer now has peace with God through Jesus Christ. We have full pardon of our sins and the title to eternal life. The crowning gift is an abiding joy and peace in the Lord. That's the crowning gift of our salvation. It's an abiding peace, an abiding joy and peace in the Lord. In other words, beloved, we are to never be without joy. We are to never be without peace. We may not always be happy and cheerful, but we should never be without joy and we should never be without peace. That's a part of our salvation package. And so I say again, don't allow anyone, shall I say, don't, don't give away your peace. Uh, because since it's given, since it's given by Christ, people can't even steal your peace. You know, we again we said, don't let them steal your joy, don't let them steal your they cannot steal that. You have to give that away. Because no one can steal what 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 Christ has secured. Only the one that it belongs to can give it away. And so since it's part of your salvation package, only you can give that away. No one can steal your joy. So if you find yourself without joy, just trace it back to the place that you were when you gave it away. When when you when you found when you realize that you're no, no longer in peace, trace it back to the place where you were when you gave your peace away. Because it's a part of our salvation package. Glory to God. I felt that. I felt that. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. Let's close out at uh, Romans chapter number eight and verse number six. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded, which is the fleshly mind, it means we're minding the things of the world. Uh, the Bible say that that mindset, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, this is the very first message that I preached was from this, this passage of scripture. Uh, November of 
19, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, no, it wasn't. It was in December of 1989. I preached from this passage of scripture and uh, it has left an indelible mark in my life to understand this scripture for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace out of the amplified. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. A carnal mind, a fleshly mind, it pursues sin. And so it's a, it's a, it, 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 it produces uh, death because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual, there's a, there's, there's a theme here when we talk about peace. You, you see in the, in the Amplified how we read peace and within that same vein is followed by well-being. And so it's no different here in this passage of scripture in Amplified. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. Beloved, let's walk with God and let's be in peace and well-being. Let's be in peace and well-being. Thank you, thank you, thank you, each one of you so much. I really pray that uh, you receive something from this teaching on tonight. Uh, I pray that the spirit of God, amen, has even uh, enlightened the scriptures even more so and given you uh, a deeper revelation uh, of scriptures that we have we have covered on tonight. Amen. Uh, do we have any questions before we close out on tonight? I want to make sure uh, I give you the opportunity to to ask your questions uh, and so we can provide an answer on tonight. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you all again so, so much uh, for tuning in and joining us. And I definitely thank uh, God for those of you that shared this, this broadcast. Amen. Because uh, I believe that this is a powerful teaching uh, because everybody's looking for peace. Everybody is looking for peace. Saved, unsaved, everybody is looking for peace. But when we have this revelation and we understand that our peace only comes through Christ Jesus, watch and see how your marriages just explode this year because you have this revelation. Watch and see how your relationships uh, just blossom this year because you have this revelation. Uh, watch and see uh, how your health, watch and see how your health vastly improves this year because you have this revelation. You're not going to give away your peace. You're not going to give your peace away. And you're speaking, you're confessing well-being. You're speaking well-being. You're speaking it into the atmosphere. And it's God's word. And his word shall not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that in which it has been purposed to do in the heavenlies. Remember his will, his, his, his plan for you, I'm sorry, his plan for you is for peace and well-being. Start saying that, write that down and start speaking that over your life. God, your plan for me, you know the plan that you have for me. And it's of peace and well-being. It's of peace and well-being. That's where we are this year, UFCC. That's where we're living in the year of 2024, in God's peace, his perfect peace and well-being. To God be the glory. Our next time together, this coming Sunday, 1030 Central Standard Time, bring somebody to church. Bring somebody to church. Amen. Evangelize. Tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and bring somebody to church. Amen. May God bless you and may God keep you as uh, we get ready to sign off on tonight. Uh, we love you. Sheila and I appreciate each and every one of you so, so very much. We thank God for you, and we can't wait to see you, UFCC. We can't wait to see you 
and hug your necks on Sunday. And then those of you that will be joining us by way of Facebook uh, and YouTube, we can't wait to fellowship with you on this Sunday. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. Have a peaceful night's sleep. I'm praying for uninterrupted sleep that you will rise in the morning refreshed and revived. Amen. Ready to be about God's business. Amen. We love you. Good night. Declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. I believe that it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. God's getting. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, he's working a miracle just for me. And it's going to be. Listen, don't let negativity, doubt, or your haters.